This is Peter Ritchie from Solo World Traveller. What we're going to talk about now is we're going to talk about uh, the roads in Mexico. Um, a lot of people have made some comments before about how, how rough they are. Um, they're not. Um, for the most part, they're pretty, pretty well paved. Uh, they're through some of the towns that you'll find, you'll find the roads are a little bit rough. Um, if you've got an old motorcycle at the end of a, a, a long trip, like it's over a thousand miles from top to bottom, um, you're going you're gonna to probably have a few things loose. So I had a, um, one of my fog lights, one of the bolts came out of it and was just dangling down. I didn't know it until I turned them on at night after a day's riding on the, on the uh, off-road. Uh, that it was actually dangling down. Um, may have happened late, I don't know. Um, the things you are going to come across, are, I'm going to talk about a few things. Um, speed limits. You'll find some ridiculous speed limits throughout the country. Uh, even on m massive long stretches of road, it'll say 60 kilometres per hour maximum. All right? um, nobody does 60 miles per hour, 60 kilometres an hour, sorry. Um, nobody does that, which is about, which is about 45 miles an hour. Um, uh, most people are doing around about 100 in those zones. I will say that if you're going to be riding and you're an international rider, that you should probably stick to the speed limits within the towns. In most towns they're going to have things uh, like speed humps, which are called topes, um, and some of them are really big. Uh, you don't want to be riding over them with a, a, a bike full of gear. Um, uh, without seeing them because some of them really creep up to you. Some of them are coloured yellow, some of them are coloured white, some of them are not coloured at all, some of them have got signs warning you there's a tope coming up, some of them don't and you just all of a sudden are across this tope but you'll, you'll only ever find them within towns. So just slow down to about 40, 50, 45 kilometres an hour as you head through towns um, and, and just observe those signs within the towns. Outside of the towns I saw, I mean, aside from the military checkpoints and a few uh, federales, federal police, um, I didn't see too many, uh, too many police on the road stopping anybody at all, actually. I never got stopped. And I pretty much kept with the speed limits within town. Sometimes I got down to 20 kilometres an hour, which is very hard to go that slow, especially after when you're doing 100 k's an hour, um, which is about 65 miles an hour. Um, but, but try to stick with the speed limits within the towns. Um, as far as uh, mapping, if you're going to use Google Maps, if you want to have some fun and you've got an off-road bike like I have, is just turn off avoid highways. When you do a map search, there's a little three little dots on Google Maps. You click on that and it'll say avoid highways and it'll give you an alternate route. Now, some of these are really rough, uh, but they're a lot of fun. Um, I had one from uh, um, L, excuse me, um, Oh, so from San Felipe to Baja de Los Angeles, and it was probably 50, 60 miles, nearly 100 kilometres of dirt road, and it took hours, uh, but it was a lot of fun. Um, you, you'll get that washboard, uh, the corrugated effect quite a bit through there, and you've got to concentrate. Uh, I nearly come off you know, three or four times, just it, all of a sudden you hit sand, and uh, if, you, um, if you're an experienced off-roader, um, you probably won't have too many, too many problems with sand, but when it gets to be like 6, 12 inches deep and soft as all hell, uh, I think even experienced riders would have a bit of trouble with that, especially when you've got a big load on, on your bike. And, uh, and I nearly came off a few times, and I'm not an experienced off-roader. So um, you have some fun and go off, the, off, off roads, just measure your distances, how long you, you, you know, you're doing around about 40 kilometres an hour, about 30 miles an hour. Um, through those, that's pretty much all you can do. You, you can gun it a bit through the straights when you get a nice flat piece, but um, a lot of the times you're gonna hit sand unexpectedly, so always be aware of that. As far as military checkpoints, uh, you're gonna come across quite a few of them, um, especially coming into or going out of big, bigger sort of towns and some in just in the middle of nowhere. Um, if they ask you to stop, um, you should, uh, to, well, the first thing you do all the time anyway is turn off your engine. Just have a bit of respect for these people. They're doing a pretty difficult job. Um, turn off your engine, stop your vehicle. Sometimes I'll just wave you through. Um, but uh, stop, turn off your vehicle. If they want to talk, take your helmet off. It's just a bit, bit of extra respect. Um, there's a couple of bikers in front of me, they didn't take their helmets off, but I, I just took it off, just as a matter of respect for the, uh, for, for the military checkpoints. 
Uh, they're all pretty friendly, you know, they'll ask you where, they'll always ask you where you've come from and where you're going to. Always mention the town, don't mention I'm going to Patagonia uh, or anything like that, just tell them exactly uh, what town you came from and what, where you're going to. A couple of times I forgot and I sort of had to sort of remember and a couple of times they laughed at my pronunciations, um, but m most of the time they're, they're pretty friendly. Um, other things you'll encounter, you'll encounter trucks uh, giving you the left signal. Um, be wary of that a little bit, but what they're doing is saying it's clear for you to go. And they'll actually do it on the top of hills and going up, um, going up mountains and stuff like that where you wouldn't normally pass. Um, if you feel it's safe, pass, but I would always basically wait until you can get a sight on yourself, okay? Um, some of the local drivers, um, most of the drivers are pretty good, I didn't have any problem, but I had one instance going up a mountain around a corner and I saw a car behind me in my, in my rear vision mirror and, uh, and I thought, well, he'll overtake me as I go, uh, go around the corner and he took me on the corner and another car was coming the other way. It was pretty scary and, and definitely scary. I'll never forget the faces I saw in the car of the, coming the other way. They were obviously tourists and they were just in shock. And I looked in my rear vision mirror and they pulled over by the side of the road. It was, it was absolute craziness. Um, I was going around a corner on a blind corner and he overtook me. And he missed them by only a few yards. And he, but he was travelling at you know, 60 miles an hour, 100 kilometres an hour. It's just crazy. Um, but you'll find, for the most part, that you know, the drivers are pretty good. Um, as far as getting food, uh, fuel on the road, uh, you're not going to have a problem. But what I do is I, I've, I've, I've got a really bad habit in the US of just, you know, basically bleeding the tank dry. I always think, oh, well, I can't be bothered now, I'll go to the, I'll get one soon. Um, you can't do that here. Um, you're not gonna have those breaks. Now, I've got a big big bike and a, um, a big tank. Um, I've got a Ranger about, with a load on, I've got a Ranger of about 320 miles, and uh, with, a, with a load off, probably around about 380, 390 miles. Um, even though it says on my, my, my computer I've got 420, 430, I don't get that much anyway. Um, However, I've, got in, I've been getting into the habit, because I'm going to be going through a few other countries, getting the habit of uh, filling up, even if I'm three-quarter tank full. Just getting the habit of stopping when I can, um, uh, whenever I get the opportunity at a decent service station, or gas station, um, uh, filling, filling my tank up. Get into that habit. It's a good habit to get into, and it doesn't take long. They, they, they'll fill it up for you, just ask for premium. Uh, they'll probably ask you, some of them don't have premium, you just have to take the standard um, and just get it filled up. If it's 170, 180 pesos, just pay them 200 and let them have it. A lot of the time this is all the money they make, um, so just give them the change of it. Um, if it's 100 pesos, just give them like 20, 30 pesos at back. Uh, I, I, I would do that. I mean, they don't get paid well enough. It's up to you, you don't have to do it. Uh, you can ask for the change. but. Uh, if you can spare a little, few little dollars here and there, do that. Um, so as far as food goes, I, I, I've got this thing where I'm just going to be eating local food uh, all the time. So when I go through a small town, if there's somebody with a tent up and it's a little small business, usually a mother and a father and their kids, they set up and they'll sell tacos and fajitas and burritos. Um, the fish tacos throughout the country, uh, throughout this state, of Baja have been phenomenal in every town. Some of them have been so delicious. Um, and the food's always been great. And if you get a bit of shade, have a bit of a break, uh, all, always good. As far as scenery in the roads, uh, you've, you're gonna be blown away. Um, some of the mountain ranges and you, know, you have mountains on one side, ocean on the other, are just absolutely stunning, absolutely beautiful, and so nice to ride. To ride. Not a lot of stops where you can actually stop and get a picture, hit a photo because there's, there's not a lot of uh, uh, stops along the way where you can actually, like scenic, scenic sort of points where you can actually park your vehicle. There are a few. Um, uh, get coming out of Baja de, de Los Angeles, the road out of there coming down south is unbelievable. Um, I haven't seen anything like it before in my life. It was so beautiful. The ocean on one side and rugged mountain ranges on the other, it was just phenomenal. So enjoy yourself. Uh, always try to be uh, be careful on the roads and, and, and drive at a safe speed. Uh, respect the local drivers. Respect driving through the towns, and uh, enjoy yourself.